Products must have C marking. That's a very important question when you start selling a product in the EU. So C marking is a compliance mark, which in turn indicates that the product is compliant with all applicable regulations and directives, which in turn require the C mark. And keep in mind that it, it could be more than one such directive or regulation that applies to the to the same product. Examples include the Toy Safety Directive, LBD, PP regulation, and a medical devices regulation. And finally, products which are not covered by a C marking directive should not be C marked. Simple as that. So in this video, as we go forward, I will essentially list all the different product categories and the corresponding um, regulations and directives which have some sort of C marking provision or requirement. And finally, I will also cover some of the, let's say, requirements that are related to, to C marking but go beyond the C mark itself. So let's begin. So the first category is toys. Toys are, as defined by the Toy Safety Directive, which requires C marking, products with play value or play features. This means that not every children's product in the EU should carry the C mark. It's specifically for toys. Now keep in mind that it can be a fairly broad um, product scope as, as long as a product that has play features, if the product has play features, then it may need a C mark. In many cases, this is very clear cut, say Legos, but what if you have, say, baby furniture that have some sort of play feature, well in that case you may also need a C mark. I think it also applies to, uh, the directive also applies to, to bicycles depending on the uh, the height. Okay, so that was the first category. Second we have electronics. So when it comes to electronics we have more than one directive to take into consideration. We have the low voltage directive which applies if your product is within um, a certain span when it comes to input or the output voltage. But to keep it really simple, if your product can be connected to, the power, to a power socket, then the low voltage directive applies. This means that it applies to AC adapters, light bulbs, or anything else you can connect to the power socket, but not necessarily to a battery powered device. Just to give you an idea. Second, we have the EMC directive, which concerns electromagnetic compatibility. It essentially applies to all consumer electronics. There are some exceptions, exemptions uh, specifically defined as inherently benign equipment. Um, I did another video uh, last week on this, so you can find that video about the EMC directive on our YouTube channel or the website compliancegate.com to learn more about the uh, products that are covered by the EMC directive and those that are exempt from the requirements of this EMC directive. Number three we have the ROHS directive and ROHS also applies to all electronics. I think they got rid of essentially the last exemptions, meaning that if you sell consumer electronics at least, then it, you can assume that it, it's covered, that the product is covered by the ROHS directive. And what ROHS does is that it sets limitations, it restricts heavy metals, and not just heavy metals, but it also goes into chemicals like phthalates. So in short, the components made to assemble the electronic product, say this LED light bulb, must not contain certain substances above the set limits. Number four, we have the radio equipment directive and the radio equipment directive applies to all devices with some sort of wireless communication. So if it's a device that is Wi-Fi enabled, uh, Bluetooth enabled, LTE, 5G, GPS, etc., then you can assume that the radio equipment directive also applies. Finally, we have the Echo Design Directive, which concerns uh, energy efficiency and is relevant if you sell some sort of appliances, could be, well, espresso machine, could be white goods, to give an idea. So what's interesting here is that you can have a situation when, say, take this LED light bulb, for example. Due to the input voltage, we can assume that the low voltage directive applies, the EMC directive applies, 
and ROH yes, applies because it applies to all electronics. And I believe that even the Echo Design Directive might apply to LED light bulbs. I'm not 100% sure, but it would make sense because there should be some sort of en energy efficiency requirements. And now that I think about it, well, I live in Hong Kong, so I, I don't see EU labeling every day, but I think that you will see um, energy ratings on the packaging, which in turn, I think in the case of the Echo Design Director applies. Then if you have some sort of communications with a wireless device, this is especially be becoming more commonplace now with smart home devices and functionality, IoT and all that, then you can also assume that the radio equipment directive applies. Okay, and all of these regulations and directives require the C mark. So if a single one of these apply, then the C mark is required. Okay, let's move on. So number three, we have personal protective equipment, which are covered by the PP regulation. Examples include helmets, protective gloves, swimming aids, it could be life vests, etc., eyewear. If you're supposed to protect the wearer, the consumer, then you can assume that the PPE regula regulation applies. Something that is also important to mention about the PPE regulation is that of the different categories. There are three different categories, category one, category two, and category three. And if you're interested in the definition of these categories, then I again recommend a different video that I recorded recently specifically on the topic of the PPE regulation. Um, the category in turn uh, determines documentation requirements and whether you need to involve a notified body. It can be a bit complex, but the key when it comes to the PPE regulation is, is understanding the different categories and the uh, requirements that apply depending on the category. Okay, next we have medical devices. So I want to uh, be straightforward and mention that we usually don't work with medical devices, so I'm not an expert when it comes to medical devices, but for the time being, there's the medical device regulation, which I believe applies to essentially anything that's defined as a uh, medical device. And, and then in addition, you also have the in vitro diagnostic medical devices regulation, which I believe is relevant for various tests. Testing kits could be, well, it could be a COVID-19 testing kit, for example. So product examples, well, could include this uh, pulse oximeter, could include maybe a heart rate monitor, could include certain types of, of um, face masks, and so on. But again, it's not really my core area of expertise. Um, but yeah, uh, C marking applies to essentially all medical devices. Next we have construction products and this is uh, very often overlooked and perhaps because you don't necessarily find a C mark on say flooring tiles or something like that and that's not really a requirement um, but you still have to go through the C marking process. So the product scope, well the definition of a construction product which is then covered by the construction products regulation or CPR which requires CE marking is the following. This is straight from the regulation on the EU website. So construction product means any product or kit which is produced or placed in the EU market for incorporation in a permanent manner in construction works or parts thereof and the performance of which has an effect on the performance of the construction work with respect to the basic requirements for construction work. So it's it comes down to what they call construction products, construction materials. And one example would be say, say um, WPC flooring tiles, just to give an idea. Another category that is sometimes overlooked is what they call measurement instruments, which in turn are covered by the measuring instruments directive and a few years ago well more than a few years ago now um sort of bar in shanghai and this was the let's say the early days when we started to work more and more with uh, product compliance related questions and uh, i ordered a stella and uh, 
I noted there was a C mark on, 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 on the glass and I just couldn't understand why. So I discussed this with my, well, the co-founder of Compliance Gate, and Ivan Malocci, and well, we thought that perhaps this was related to food contact materials or something like that. But no, it turned out that if a, a drinking glass, such as a, well, a Stella glass, for example, has some sort of specified volume, which in this case is a pint, then is actually within the scope of the measuring instruments directive. Now, it does <laughs> goes beyond pint glasses, of course. Uh, other examples include heat meters, gas meters, water meters, and so on. So, if it is an instrument of some sort that is for measurement purposes, then you need to look into into the measuring instruments directive and you can find a pretty clear definition of the product scope on the European Union website if you are unsure if your product is within the scope then we have machinery if I remember correctly machinery is it doesn't include gym equipment or anything that is manually powered it only if there's some sort of uh, if there's some sort of external force uh, say an electrical motor or a uh, um, something like that then and and this is then combined with some sort of moving parts like inside this treadmill then the machinery directive applies you can of course find a much more precise definition on the EU website in any case examples include again machinery interchangeable equipment safety components lifting accessories chain ropes and webbings removable machine transmission devices and partly completed machinery i think this is the definition actually from the from the eu website uh, sorry the 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 legal act of the machinery directive on the eu website and all machinery as part of the machinery directive uh, must have the c mark right then we have a long list of regulations and directives that don't well, that don't cover most, well, if I can use the term consumer products. It depends on how we define consumer products. But that compliance gate, we primarily work with brands and an e-commerce that sell some sort of consumer goods. But I still want to mention these. So other regulations and directives that do have C marking requirements include the non-automatic weighting instruments directive. I have no experience with that hot water boilers directive noise emission in in the environment directive gas appliances regulation pressure equipment directive simple pressure vessels directive lifts directive cableway installations regulation recreational craft directive i think it applies to small boats that one I actually have a bit of experience with Rail systems, uh, inter op interoperability directive, I have no experience with that. Equipment for explosive atmosphere, ATEX directive, no experience with that. And the same thing goes for explosive for civil use directive and uh, pyrotechnic articles directive. It's not really products that we work with at Compliance Gate, so I, I'm not going, going into detail on any of these directives in this video. But I do have a few more points to raise, and this is very important. So the, the regulations and directives that I mentioned, that I brought up in this video, they have a C marking requirement. So this means that C marking is, um, it exists as a requirement in all of these directives, okay? So this means that C marking in itself is not singular in in its meaning in short it signals to the consumer and market surveillance authorities that this product is compliant with one or more directives or regulations that in turn require the c mark but the c mark itself is not enough what these regulations and directives have in common is the following so first of all the product must be compliant with harmonized standards under the applicable directives 
or regulations. What this means is that if I determine that my product is covered by, say, the low voltage directive, then I have to go uh, on the EU website and identify the harmonized standards under the low voltage directive that apply to my product. Okay? That's the first step. Second, I need to arrange lab testing. They don't use the term lab testing, as far as I know. They generally refer to a conformance assessment procedure. But in short, if your product is covered by a C marking regulation or directive, you need to verify compliance. You can't guess your way to compliance. And unless you have the equipment and expertise in house, and this means that you will need to go to a, to a third party. And not just that, if you're selling, say, PPE or medical devices that fall into certain categories, then you will need to involve a notified body, which in turn must do the testing. But in any case, some sort of testing procedure to verify compliance with the harmonized standards is required. Three, you need to issue a declaration of conformity. This is essentially a statement where you declare that a certain product imported and manufactured by a certain company, that's your company, complies with this or that regulation and also complies with a, a clearly defined list of harmonized standards. That's essentially what a declaration of conformity is. It's a self-issued document, but you must issue one. Four, you need to create technical documentation. You can find another video on our YouTube channel specifically about how to create technical documentation and the items to include. But in short, the technical documentation, it covers specifications, design drawings, PCB schematics, bill of materials, the DOC, all test reports, risk assessment. Essentially, the market surveillance authorities should be able to look at the technical documentation and, and determine if your product is compliant. Other, other items you have to include is packaging artwork, including the, the, the compliance marks and the C mark itself. So it's sort of a summary. But again, if you want to go deeper into the topic of technical documentation, you can find uh, a video specifically on this topic on our website. Five, you may also need to involve a notified body. And I briefly mentioned this, but certain products cannot, well, certain products that are covered by one or more C marking regulations or directives cannot be, say, self certified. These products, which includes PPE category two and three, and possibly all medical devices, I'm not sure, must be sort of approved by a notified body. And a notified body is a, a designated company that has the right to act uh, as a notified body within a certain country in the EU and for a certain product, such as PPE. So, for example, the, the notified body for, uh, for PPE in Finland is SGS, if I remember correctly. So if I'm a Finnish company and I want to work with a notified body in Finland, then I would then reach out to SGS, assuming it concerned um, uh, personal protective equipment. What they do, what the notified body does, is that they need to review my technical documentation, the DOC, any pre-existing test report if they exist and in some cases well in many cases i would say also do uh, um, arrange testing for the product and and based on that they they can then issue a ec examination type certificate again we also have a video specifically about notified bodies if you want to go deeper into that topic and also an article on compliancegate.com finally traceability labeling is also required Traceability labeling includes a batch ID or serial numbers, anything that can trace the product to a specific production run, which is necessary in case of a recall or a manufacturing defect or something like that. Product name, or SKU, model number to make it easy to identify the product, your company information, and also um, contact point. So keep in mind that this is... Uh, a complement to the C marking requirements. So in short, what I want to get to here is that you can't just get a C mark printed and, and call it a day. If your product is covered by one or more C marking directives or regulations, 
then you will also have to ensure compliance with the six points on this slide. There could be other requirements. Uh, it's not necessarily always this straightforward. This is a simplified version, but you could say that all C marking directives, or at least most C marking directives and regulations, require that you go through this six step procedure. So yeah, there's a there's a lot more to C marking than just the C mark, if I can put it that way. Okay, so that was everything I had in this video. Hope you learned a few things. If you have any questions about this topic, then feel free to write a comment. You can do so in the comment section on our website, on compliancegate.com. You just scroll down to the bottom, or you can do the same thing on YouTube in the comment section. Thank you for watching.